Welcome to this video, and in this video, we are going to continue with our series of statistics tool, where we are going to talk about how to derive the standard deviation formula. The standard deviation formula has so many ways to write it, but in this case, we are going to find one way in which we can write this standard deviation. Now, before we derive the standard deviation formula, there are some formulae that we must have gone through before. The first one is X bar, or what we call the mean of a given data. The mean of a given data is given as summation of fx divided by the summation of f. And also, we are supposed to have gone through something like d is equal to x minus x bar. What does that mean? d represents the deviation from the mean. So assuming we have a set of data, and each data or each class will be represented by the midpoint. We are going to take the, the boundaries, we add them and find their average. So all the averages will be called x, and the x bar is the assumed mean. We are going to take one of the means, one of all the means from the midpoint, and we assume it. And we are going to find how they are deviated, or how they are deviating from the mean we have chosen. Also, we must have uh, met such a formula like this, that to calculate v, where v represents the variance, then you have uh, used uh, summation of f v squared, divided by summation of f. Now with that, we are now ready to work out or to go through the formula for finding the standard deviation using the three relationships here. Now, also, it is good to understand that for you to find the standard deviation, then you take the square root of the variance. So if you take the square root of the variance, then you get what we call the standard deviation. If you square on both sides, then you're going to have s squared is equal to the square here cancels out with the square root we made with variance. Now, if we now replace this, this variance with what we have here, we are going to have s squared is equal to, now instead of having v, we are going to have summation of f d squared divided by the summation of f. Alright, so we are going on. Also, we notice that we have a d squared here, and we say d is the variation or the deviation from the mean. And therefore, we can replace d with what it is d is x minus x bar, and if I can do that, then we're going to have the summation of f. Instead of d, then we have uh, x minus x bar, and remember, d is square, and therefore we're going to have x minus x bar squared, and we divide this by the summation of f. Right, so let me use the room over here. Now this one, x minus x bar, is an identity, because remember, if you have a minus b squared, can be written as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, right? So using that identity, then we can expand what we have in the brackets here. So we're going to have the summation of f uh, into, now instead of having x minus x bar squared, then we're going to expand it. We take the first one squared, that is x squared minus x multiplied by x bar twice. So 2 multiplied by x minus x bar. Finally, we have the last term squared plus, that is x bar squared. And all this we divide by the summation of f. Well, this is uh, such a good step. And if we can uh, now expand this, we open this bracket and see what we have. So finally, we have, uh, remember this is s squared is equal to the summation of f x squared minus the summation of f 2x x bar plus right we have the summation of f x bar squared and all this we are supposed to divide by the summation of f well now if you observe our formula very thinly we are going to notice that we have a common denominator here which we can write each term with its uh, common denominator and if I do that then you're going to have s squared is going to be equal to the summation of f x squared divided by the common denominator which is the summation of f minus the summation of f 2 x x bar divided by the summation of f and plus the summation of f x bar squared divided by the summation of f and now with this one, we are going to eliminate a few uh, things that we know. For instance, if you look at this formula right here, we are having summation of fx divided by summation of f, which if we keenly look at this uh, term right here, we have summation of fx divided by summation of f. Therefore, we can uh, replace exact summation of f, 
x divided by the summation of f with the x bar. Again, in this term, we notice that we have the summation of f and summation of f, therefore they can cancel out. But this term we are going to leave it the way it is, and therefore this is what we do. We will remain with s squared is equal to the summation of fx squared divided by the summation of f. Then we subtract that from, so we say we are going to replace the summation of fx divided by the summation of f with x bar, and then we have a 2, and therefore 2 x bar, and then we have the other x bar here. Then plus this cancels out with this, we remain with summation or we remain with x bar squared, which is a x bar x bar. Ah, such a good step. Now again, you notice that we have two of this and one of this is the minus, and therefore, if we subtract the two, we are going to remain with only one of them, and therefore, the s squared is going to be written as summation of fx squared divided by summation of f. Now, because we have two of these and one of, one of each, then we are going to remain with only one, and that is minus x bar squared. Very well. Now, so the remaining bit is to now replace x bar with what it is here. So if we replace it with what it is, then we have s squared is equal to summation of fx squared minus... Now, we are going to replace x bar with what it is, and that is, remember we have summation of f here, uh, minus summation of fx divided by summation of f and we square the whole of it and finally the standard deviation formula if we square root on both sides we move the square on this side then we are going to begin with the formula for standard deviation is given as s is equal to the square root of summation of fx squared divided by the summation of f and we subtract that from the mean square. The mean square is summation of fx divided by the summation of f. And that becomes the formula for finding the standard deviation of a given data. Again, it is very easy to go through such steps, uh, provided you know the following, that the mean can be given by this one, the basic formula for finding the standard deviation is this one, and the b represents the deviation from the mean. And also, it's good to know that if you want to get the standard deviation, then you are going to find the, the square root of the variance. Now that becomes the first formula for finding the standard deviation. And in our preceding videos, we are also going to derive a few more formula for finding the standard deviation. Please remember to share this video, comment, and also subscribe.